Hey, you guys. So how are y'all doing? Anyway, girl, let me get this stuff out the way in the background. Sorry, y'all. I ordered a bunch of clothes from Sheen, Shine, whatever you want to call it. I will be doing a haul. This is so embarrassing. I will be doing a haul in a couple more weeks once all the clothes come in. Um, I'm going to be doing my makeup and half of my hair. So y'all, it's 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. If you celebrate 4th of July, if you don't, okay, my husband gave me a lecture on why black people shouldn't celebrate 4th of July. I get it, Alex. I get it, but I know you're still going to eat this barbecue. So, <laughs> y'all, let's get into it. I'm going to do my makeup. Y'all, we're going to jump right into it. No time wasted. You know how we do it. We talk about what's going on in my personal life, what I'm watching on YouTube, and what I'm watching on TV. Now, one thing I want to say is shout out to really believe your I should know your name by now. You've been following me for years. Really me. She's commented on my last um, to chat that my skin looks great. What am I using? and What am I doing? I will do an updated skin regimen, but you guys, I don't do a lot. You know what I do? I stay out of folks' business and I pray and I try to be overall healthy. I'm not as healthy as I could be right now, but I try to be healthy. Um, so y'all, let me go ahead and jump into it. Personal life is going well. I got up early this morning and I did a um, lesson plan for JB for summer school for the next two weeks. And uh, poor JB, y'all, a couple of days ago, he, not a couple of days ago, two nights ago, he woke up vomiting nonstop for a couple of hours. And baby, when I told you I was tired the night before, I only got five hours of sleep. That night, I only got another five hours. So the following day, I really, really slept. So my husband, being the smart man that he is, smart and fine man that he is, he said that you're not washing your hands right. You're not washing your hands properly to JV. He's like, you you clearly have some type of gastro issue because you um vomiting and you having diarrhea and sure enough it cleared up within 24 hours it cleared up so he's fine um we're going to be doing a little bit of homeschooling and um what else is going on nothing much y'all i've decided when it comes to the move i'm not gonna share a lot i'm gonna wait until we got things done and settled but you guys will get updates but i'm not going to overshare a lot i just want to keep that part a little private so i'm not going to really be talking about that part a lot girl let me turn this down so i look light as hell i am not this light skin is this okay i've noticed that i've been a little short with jb a lot more than i have been and i'm going to get emotional i know i am couple of days and I, I am one of those parents that I do apologize to my child when I feel like I'm sincerely in the wrong I do apologize and I learned that from from Miss Delightful hey girl how you doing I need for you to post a video anyway I've been a little short with JB and as moms sometimes when we get really stressed we can we can be that way right so a couple of days ago I was so short with JB and I said, you know, I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. And he said, that's okay. It's okay. I've gotten used to it. Y'all, my heart sank when he said that because I really don't want him to get used to me being that way. I don't want to be the yelling mom. And, and even my husband said today, he's like, why are you yelling at him? I don't want to be that way. I know JB knows I love him and I care for him. But I need to have more patience and stop instead of just jumping to the gun. So that really, and I told him, I said, a couple of hours later when I had time to think about it, I said that that was really eye-opening for me. Um, and I don't want you to feel, I don't want you to be okay with that. I don't want you to be used to that because that's not right. So that's something I really need to work on and I notice about myself and I'm going to be praying about that. Like seriously, and I know that when you pray for something, God will test you. So if I'm going to be praying for patience and how to react, I'm going to get those situations to come up more often. But yeah, that broke my heart when he said that because I don't want my baby to feel like because I honestly and mama if you're watching me you know my parents really don't watch this my mom was that mom she was very short she yelled a lot she gave out spankings and discipline without explaining herself now i don't do that 
uh, cause JB rarely gets a spanking. Um, but she was just very angry all the time. And, and, and as an adult and as I got older, she explained why she was that way, which I'm not going to share on my channel because that's, that's personal. She explained why she was the way she was, but I don't want to be that type of mother to my child. So I don't want to repeat that cycle of just snapping. Um, so yeah, that's all what's going on with personal life. But as parents, we really do need to, to notice when we're doing stuff that is not you know right and try to correct it try to correct the behavior um but y'all jp even told me and i know he the baby's just eight years old but he told me y'all he said because i mentioned something about kids and he said oh i'm not having kids i said what what happened to boris and um abigail y'all he used to have He used to have make-believe friends that were his kids. I think he was, he he's developed them when he was like five years old. And they were his children. And their names were Boris and Abigail. Like what type of German ass Eastern European sh shows you watching? Boris and Abigail. And he would say stuff like, okay, mama, I'm, uh, can you fix me a snack? And you can, can you fix Boris and Abigail a snack too? I'm like, what the hell? So I gotta feed you and your damn imaginary friends. Hell no. Child, I did this all wrong. You see? You see how you be when you be drinking? Don't drink, kids. I'm gonna put this over it, though. I did that all wrong, but I'm gonna put this over it. That'll fix it. I was supposed to do the maroon in the crease, and I accidentally did it on the eyelid. But that's okay. We can fix it. See? See? We fixing it right now. All right, y'all, my wings are in the oven here. In a second, I'm gonna have to put some foil on it. So what I'm watching on YouTube. So just today, Miss Angel, AKA, let me not say her name. She's like, you be 10, okay, girl. Nezzy Naps went live, and girl, she's still on live. She is setting her hair. Nezzy Naps is doing her starter, her twists for her locks. And girl, look. I went to go run an errand. I went to go bother Miss Lori. I started my size and she's still setting those twists. She's been on there for six hours. Oh Lord, she, I think she, she's doing mini two strand. Y'all, I need to stop. This foundation is getting everywhere. She's doing mini two strand twists, which a lot of people do to start locks. And I honestly would love to have locks, you guys. Um, but I just know that I wouldn't keep them in. I know I wouldn't. Cause I love to have my hair out loose and flowing. Um, but yeah, I know a couple of y'all are subscribed to Nezzy. You probably already saw she's starting her locks, her lock journey. I'm really excited to see it, how things go. We talked about, you know, she has several textures like most of us do, but that's too brown. You see that? That's way too brown. It's too dark. You see, you can even see it. Hold on, y'all. And so, she has that. Um, Her hair is, almost has this, she's, she's, in my opinion, she's 3C, 4A, 4B. I really do think you have some 3C in there, Angel. Don't fight me. Don't fight me. Um, but not a lot of 4C. Now, I do think that you were probably 4C at one point. You had more 4C, 4B like me. This is so ghetto. I'm using this light ass concealer to lighten me up. She's not even coming out either. This is not coming out. This is cakey as hell. But this is gonna work. Let me show you. It's gonna work. I promise you. Child. Y'all remind me never again to act like this on cam. Ever. Ever. God, let me put some of this stuff up. Um. So yeah, y'all. What else I'm watching on YouTube? Okay, so Nezzy did her locks. Okay, girl, I've been watching Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. Y'all, I think, no, I know a lot of, 
damn clown. A lot of these shows are highly scripted. Even the Kitchen Nightmares is scripted. Um, so one of the craziest episodes was with Amy's Baking Company out here in lovely Scottsdale, Arizona. Amy is that shit crazy though. I follow Amy. I got in on Amy's Instagram channel. I follow her on Instagram. Amy, um, her and her husband, who is an older Greek man, I think he's like 20 or 30 years older than her, hasn't been deported back to Greece, you guys. Anyway, um, but Amy is a great cook. I will say that. A great baker, too. Far, a fabulous baker. Her stuff is beautiful on Instagram. So I follow her, follow her channel child she's crazy though and she was one of the few people that um gordon couldn't help but they also had stated on another channel amy and her husband at the time that the show edited out and they put together clips to make it seem like they were to make it seem like they were you know a certain type of way i do believe that i really do but i also think that again she ain't all the way wrapped up uh but Gordon Ramsay, y'all, I I like his show, but he's has some dirt on him. I think he um has a mistress who even wrote a book about their affair. Yeah, so we ain't gonna really get too much into that. Shout out to Chocolate Capricorn. Hey girl. Um, she had recommended a young lady's um channel to me. Her name is O Steph Co. And the video I watched of hers was pretty privilege. And now at first when I saw the title, I was like, girl, these millennials will come up with anything. <laughs> but the more I watch it and was really looking at her other videos, I began to understand where she was coming from. That there is a certain way that we as human beings treat people who are good looking. Um, there's research on this. I mean, sorry, yeah, there's research on this. This is a, this has been proven that people who are more attractive um, get treated better in society. I won't go into detail, but every job that I've gotten, you guys, where the a man was the only interviewer I've gotten, every job that I've had, where only the man was interviewing the job was my interviewer, I've gotten it, no problem. Hell, one job. I would trash that interview and I know I trashed it, whatever. But it was very interesting to hear what this, uh, Stephanie is her name. I think she's cute. I don't find her unattractive. I wouldn't say this is an ugly person. She has beautiful skin. Uh, she has great teeth. So that's what I look for, but I'm not a man. You know what I mean? But she, and thank you again, Chocolate Cap Capricorn. Like I said, the only thing that I feel very conflicted on, she has several videos and her channel is booming. She compares herself too much to other people. At a young age, like high school age, she would say things like, oh my God, if I can't get a date here, how am I gonna find a guy that's gonna wanna date me and eventually get married? You know what I mean? Like, I saw this pattern, or I'm witnessing this pattern of how she viewed herself as a young girl through, uh, you know, a young adult and now womanhood. And now she's 37 years old. She also has another video where she says, you know, I'm not going to have children and that's okay. So she already made up in her mind that since she hasn't been successful at dating, online dating and dating in general, that she won't be able to meet someone and fall in love, get married and have children. And I just think that's very disheartening. Um, I would think, and I, I will say this, and this is what I responded to Ch Chocolate Capricorn. I do appreciate her transparency and her being honest, because I'm pretty sure there are tons of young women who feel that way. However, I know women who look worse than her, at least to me on the outside, who are married with kids, who found love, and you know what I mean, who have that confidence and didn't stick themselves in a box and say, I won't be able to do A, B, Z, Y, Z. You've already said it. You've already declared it out loud. It may not be you having those children physically. It could be you. It could be you adopting children. It could be you accepting his children as your own. You know what I mean? I just feel 
I'm a very optimistic, positive person. I believe in the visualizations and all of that and having a vision board and saying, this is what I want to be. This is where I want to be at in a couple of years. I try not to do age on it because if you would have told me a, a while back that I would have been in my thirties, married and have the kids to me, that's late as hell. I should have done that 10 years ago, but I didn't do that. I said, okay, this time span. And if it doesn't happen, we're going to make the goals in this time span. You know what I mean? So like I said, I appreciate her honesty. She's not. Um, you guys, let me just add this because I have went back and watched some more Stephanie videos and I do like her. I've actually subscribed to her. So, you know, my views and opinions are coming from someone who hasn't had to date in the last 20 years. So I can only imagine the challenges, um, especially with all these folks being fake. But honestly, that is where this sermon comes into play. You know, a lot of people, when they meet me for the first time and they like, you know, ask me my opinion of someone that they, I'd be honest. And they're like, wow, you can come off as a little judgmental. No. No, it may be judgmental to you, but discernment, okay? So I went back and rewatched Stephanie's video where she said that she's not going to have kids and that's okay. Um, unfortunately, she did suffer a miscarriage and, and that's very unfortunate. She did mention that the guy wouldn't have been a good fit anyway. And I do admire, again, that she holds herself accountable for, you know, uh, choosing to be with someone like that. Again, but this is where discernment comes into play, y'all. Um, she was a little sad. She mentioned she was a little sad and actually depressed back in 2020 after seeing a post from another woman who met someone, I believe, on, either online or something. They fell in love, got engaged. Let me tell you something, y'all. We really cannot compare ourselves to the things that we see on social media. Social media is so toxic. Um, the imagery that we see is fake and we've seen this happen time and time again. I find honestly that people that are always posting about how great their husband is, their wife is, how great everything is. They, those are the ones that are almost overcompensating for something. Honestly, the people who are out there having these great marriages, husband, wife with the 2.5 kids, they ain't, they ain't posting on Twitter and Instagram all the time because they're busy living their great lives. You know what I mean? So I just want to say that. Uh, she's not giving herself, I don't know what the, what you call it, girl. Um, she's confident, I do get that, but do not give up on yourself so soon. I feel like she's, she gave up on herself so soon, too soon. Y'all talk to me, those of you who are in your 40s and 50s, let me know, she's 37 years old. I feel like she still has time to find love. I feel like sometimes, Especially as as women, we we feel like the the clock is ticking. We have to do these things by these this timeline. By the who who says so? Who says why? Yeah, um, very interesting young woman. I keep saying that because she came off as very young, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So girl, moving on from that, Tabitha and Wendy Williams. First of all, I understand that a part of Wendy Williams' jobs, job is to talk about what's in the gossip, whether it be internet, you know, um, viral stuff, celebrities, the internet celebrities. But the way that she came at Tabitha and her 20 plus years marriage, Wendy, which is very tacky to me. Wendy, why, what, what, why are you so upset? Like Wendy is just upset and bitter for no reason. I really do. So, baby, Tabitha's read, her <laughs> graceful, elegant read was everything. And I and I really do feel when it comes from someone like Tabitha, unlike Monique, I really do feel like it comes from a place of sincerity and a place of love. I really do feel like that because she's <laughs> boy I, I need to go back and, and listen to that video but I, I do feel like it comes from because when I see Tabitha's videos and when I first heard about that her I discovered her on Facebook and she was doing some vegan stuff because she's vegan right she was doing some vegan um sponsorships and I just saw this lightness about her and I didn't realize she was actually a little bit older than I thought she was she has this youthful appearance she has this positive positive light. I love people like that. Just positive energy and just light. And I'm just attracted to that type of personality. And I guess for you, for you, for you who don't know, 
um, Tabitha's husband decided to retire. He's a police officer and he was supposed to retire a couple of years ago. But now 15 years later, Tabitha was like, you good, babe. I'm, I'm doing good now. Why don't you sit back? And Wendy was like, uh-uh. Who are you, Wendy? What's going on? What's going on in the background? What's, like, seriously. Like, why are you coming for her like that? But baby Tapitha did not waste any time. No time at all. So good for her. Um, so y'all, what else am I watching? Um, was watching this kid. I guess he's a TikToker and he had some videos called What Do You Do for a Living? And so he's knocking on these random people door. Girl, again, talk about privilege. Knocking on these people doors and basically asking them what do they do for a living? But one thing I find very interesting is that a good 70% of the people were entrepreneurs. Basically, they had their own businesses. Beautiful houses. His name is Aaron Van Coomer or whatever, girl. Um... And most of the people, when they, you know, they answer the question, you know, let him know what that they do for them. They own stuff. They have businesses. They have businesses overseas. And so they have employers. They're not working for someone else. I guess that's what I'm saying. And if they are, they are CEOs of like an IT company. Like seriously. So yeah, that was interesting. All right, y'all. I know I'm doing this pretty fast, but Jamie's getting on my nerves. Um, you know what? Let me finish doing my hair and makeup. And maybe I'll come back on cam and show y'all what it looks like. TV, good girls yes yes and you know what was interesting about the actor money uh many money many montoya is that he's very he's very private i actually like that and i appreciate that he's very private with his social life he's very private on social media good girls was canceled he has not spoken out at all about it at least from what i've seen on, on instagram i don't really use twitter that much anymore um he also is, I understand this. He said when he's on set, he's very professional. Like he kind of thinks that some of his other uh, co-stars wish he was a little bit more open, but he's very professional. To him, that's a job. So he's not out, hey, how you doing? Um, you want, you want a muffin? He ain't like that. He's there to work. He's there to be real. He ain't there to be your friend. Okay, this is, this is work. So Good Girls and Good is, was good. Handmaid's Tale season finale was everything. I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but it was everything, okay? I think that June has gone off the tail end. And y'all, that actor who plays Nick is fine to me. He is fine. And those of you who don't know, his father was actually either a producer or director for the HBO series with um, Jill Scott, the number one detective's agency. And the reason why that series did not continue is because the actor who played Nick, his father passed away and another man passed away. So they couldn't even keep up the series. But that was a great series on HBO. What else am I watching, girl? I watched... Again, which is one of my favorite movies, but I don't try, I try not to watch it a lot because it's, it's it, Memoirs of a Geisha. That, but one thing I noticed in this movie, it's a Japanese movie. Oh, it's about geishas, which are Japanese culture. The actors and, excuse me, the actresses are, are Chinese. Like the one girl actually played in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. She's Chinese. And Gong Li, who played in one of my favorite movies, Curse of a Golden Flower. She's Chinese too. And the other girl, she's Malaysian. I think there was really only like two or three Japanese act actors on, on the set. But anyway, it's a great movie. I haven't seen it in a while. Um, one thing that I, I went back to look up just for my own, you know, research is that geishas really don't have sex with their clients. They're there for entertainment. Like, watch Memoirs of a Geisha. Beautiful movie, too. Um, yeah. So what else have I been watching, y'all? Did I see another movie? There was... My husband making all this noise like a damn dragon. Why are you using the bathroom in here? Are you talking to? I'm talking to you. Oh, okay. The girl that shut me up. He's like, I could use any bathroom I want. What's wrong with you? Okay, you right, Alex. You right. Um, what else did I watch? I haven't continued to watch Manifest. I don't think I'm going to continue that. There is, oh girl, 
oh my god i'm so excited rl stein has a new series about like a cool 90s i even remember this i cannot wait it is on netflix i'm gonna watch it y'all i'm a huge rl stein christopher pike actually a couple of years ago christopher pike responded to my, one of my comments when i tell you i was in total like I was starstruck at that. I'm a nerd though, y'all. I read. I haven't really finished a book in a while, but I have tons of books. I read a good novel in about three to four hours. Don't mess with me. But I got people messing with me, so I can't finish it. So y'all, let me cut this video off. I'm gonna go in here and finish my food. I know Miss Lori, like, what are you doing? 